Some of you may know that I started my research into the planetary geometry and large earthquakes about eight years ago. It was with this very constellation that coincided with a sudden seismic increase, a very sudden seismic increase, large earthquakes in a matter of hours in the North and South Pacific. And that really started my research. And you can find that here on the About page on the website, sgos.org. How it all started and subsequent research indeed indicated planetary geometry, obvious planetary geometry at the time of the largest earthquakes. In the last eight years, I've been entirely focusing on planetary geometry, also involving the moon and larger earthquakes. But what stood out for me with those largest earthquakes is the obvious gap of about 40 years, roughly 40 years, which was very obvious after the 2004 megathrust earthquake off the coast of northern Sumatra. You can clearly see the 9.3, 9.0, 9.1, 9.3. .9 These are current estimates of that seismic event. And we have to go back to 1964 to find another 9.2. That's about 40 years. If you go further back in time, we see similar gaps. We have a grouping of megathrust earthquakes, 8.7, 8.8 and larger. And this goes all the way back to at least 1833. You can clearly see the grouping with roughly 35-40 years in between. And I've been asking from the very beginning, are we looking at a natural cycle here? And if so, what cycle are we actually dealing with? Now the 40 years is not really a random number. It is more or less half a Uranus cycle. If we look at Uranus orbit around the Sun, that takes roughly 84 years. So half a Uranus cycle is about 42 years. And I've been asking, is Uranus somehow involved? It's the only planet closest to the 40 years gap that we can see between these largest earthquakes. In order to find out, I tried to collect the largest known earthquakes in history. And I was able to compile this list, primarily earthquakes of magnitude 8.8 .8 and larger. The earliest known megafrost earthquake that I've been able to find was in 13, around 1394, plus minus two years off the coast of northern Sumatra, similar to the megafrost quake in 2004. Then we see megafrost quakes in the 15th century, 16th century, and from the 17th century we see more of them. But mind you, between 1420 and 1498, and also between 1505 and 1585, I'm sure there also have been megafrost earthquakes. After compiling this list, I looked at the position of Uranus to see if there was anything of a pattern, something that could be recognized and in order to do so, I did not just look at the planets, but I also selected the constellations on the plane of the ecliptic here. That is, we have a heliocentric observation and we look where Uranus is. And for example, currently we see Uranus with areas in the background. These are the astronomical constellations. Astronomers use these constellations for navigation and reference purposes. And I've done exactly the same thing with this research. What I found surprised me quite a bit. Selecting each date in this list while observing the heliocentric position of Uranus, I found that Uranus was either conjunct or opposite the constellation Arius, Leo, again in the beginning of Leo, 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 Arius, Leo, Leo, Leo. Leo Arius, Sagittarius, the end of Cancer, going into Leo, from Arius to Taurus, Sagittarius, Leo, Sagittarius, Leo, Arius, Sagittarius, Leo, the end of Arius, Sagittarius, Leo, Leo, Sagittarius, Leo, 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 the end of Leo, early Virgo, early Virgo. Of these 31 megafrost earthquakes, Uranus appeared either conjunct or opposite Leo more than 50% of the time. About 20% of these earthquakes occurred with Uranus either conjunct or opposite Arius and another 20% either conjunct or opposite Sagittarius. The remaining 10% of these earthquakes occurred with 
Uranus either conjunct or opposite just outside of Leo or Aries. So what is it with these constellations? Well, if we look at the solar system, we see that the planets more or less move in an imaginary disk. And that's called the plane of the ecliptic. And here we look from underneath and here we look from the top. There are 12 star signs or constellations that humans have been referring to for more than 2000 years. And they are called Leo, that's this one here, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces, Arius, Taurus, Gemini, and Cancer. So what these constellations have in common is that they are more or less along the plane of the ecliptic. And this is important because any observation from our planet will see any of the celestial bodies that includes the moon, the sun, and the other planets along that plane of the ecliptic. So from Earth's point of view, we see the sun with the constellations in the background. And that's why these constellations are also sometimes referred to as star signs, especially in astrology. Because Earth's apparent movement throughout the year will see the sun in each subsequent constellation and also the planets. So what do these three star signs that we've seen with Uranus and the largest earthquakes on record, Leo, Arius and Sagittarius have in common? And this is the first time in my entire research since 2014 that I actually turned to astrology. Because if you order the constellations as they appear in the sky, we see that Arius, Leo and Sagittarius are connected by a triangle and that they are referred to as the fire constellations, as one of the four elements, fire, earth, air and water. Whether or not this is a coincidence, I do not know. If we look at these four elements, fire, earth, air and water, we know that fire instantly transforms materials. It decomposes the molecular structure of anything that burns up. Water, air and earth don't do that instantly. Fire does. It's the only element that does. Whether or not there is an actual connection with these elements regarding the constellations that we observe in the sky, I do not know. But it is certainly something that I keep in mind when I observe the position of Uranus. Because Uranus is currently conjunct the constellation Arius, we could say based on the statistics that there is a 20% probability of a megafrost earthquake. We can easily see that by dragging Uranus a bit to the left outside of Arius, early Taurus, and we end up in the second half of 2023. So in the next year, year and a half, roughly, there is a higher probability of a megafrost earthquake, and we're talking about 8.7, 8.8 or larger, based on the statistics of the last 600 years. Because the constellation Leo is predominant in the statistics with more than 50%, it's interesting to see when Uranus enters that constellation again. That will be a conjunction with that constellation and it enters roughly in 2042-2043. And from there it goes through Leo and then enters Virgo here in about 2051. So from roughly 2042 to 2050, there is a 50% probability of a megafrost earthquake 8.8 .8 or larger. Again, based on statistics of the last 600 years with the largest earthquakes and the position of Uranus.